Welcome to episode five of Harney's Take 10 podcast. My name is William Peake. I will be your host. And this week we have two extremely special guests. We always say they're special guests, but they're actually just people we work with. But I, I kind of like that shtick. And the two special guests are Francesca Gibbons. Hi, Francesca. How are you? Hi, William. I'm delighted to be a special guest. And secondly, we have another guest who's been brought back to see whether I can pronounce his surname properly. John Joshua Schwartzen Hepkin, how are you? Hello, well, very well, thank you. Hopefully, there won't be a need for a third time. Lucky with that one. I think, <laughs> I think, I think that was dead on. Uh, thank you, thank you. So, Francesca and Josh are BVI specialists, and we are going to take a canter through the practicalities surrounding BVI shareholders' remedies. Of course, this is a podcast. This is not a lecture. It is nothing more than a high-level overview and just some interesting tidbits and insights from our side. As a Cayman lawyer, I'm looking forward to hearing what is going on on the other side of the fence in BBI. Let's just kick off with asking Francesca, how is the London office involved in these shareholders claims? What are the advantages of the London office in terms of time zone and convenience, etc.? And how do you think that we can add value from the outset? Sure. So being based in London, we can really capitalise on the time zone. So we have a Caribbean on one side of the time zone and um, Asia 12 hours of the other and matters where we need a 24 hour team we can help bridge that gap we speak daily certainly with our Hong Kong and our BBI team so we have a really good feel of, of what's coming across their desks and most of us have lived and worked in the BBI and certainly for COVID times we're regular visitors to the BBI as well so we can really offer that real-time advice and support with the experience that backs it. Certainly from my perspective the great advantage of being based in London is that I have a healthy client base which is just you know onshore law firms who are actually based in London and you know a lot of what I do is just acting as a kind of confidential sounding board on a lot of queries and Absolutely. you know and that, that's actually where a lot of these claims come out of because there are options offshore that may not immediately resonate with the onshore lawyers. Josh you have been working on quite a big share shareholders case yes. over the summer yeah. and I was most jealous to see and hear of witness statements being taken in the bucolic bliss of an English country garden. How did that all play out for you? Yes well I'll start by saying that it, it actually poured with rain so it very much was a, an English summer's day. My we did manage answered. to find space in a gazebo which was a Covid safe environment of course but yeah as, as you say um, putting jokes aside um, our parties and witnesses have interests all over the world and we often see witnesses and, and clients in Europe. And what that means is, is specifically with things like witness statements, is we can see people involved face to face. And the particular example that you gave was a shareholders dispute. And of course, this is the opportunity for the witness to tell their story from the beginning. You have to go through stage by stage. It takes a very long time and you have to point to documents and explore and pull out all the key parts of the case. And you can't put a price on doing that face to face it just doesn't work the same yeah. when you're doing it remotely um, you know drilling down onto those particular points and it actually transpired despite this particular BVI company being located within the jurisdiction of the BVI the witness lived about half an hour from my home in Surrey so that just goes to show you why it's worth having someone on the ground to deal with what was quite a complex statement at the time. Excellent big big shout out to Surrey there nicely done. So just talk us through, you're sitting at your desk in London, phone call comes in from, say, onshore lawyer, lay client, shareholder with an issue in a BVI company. You know, what are the first thoughts that are popping into your mind, Francesca? Yeah, well, well we'll want to explore some of the non-litigation options first. I mean, you said at the outset, this is extremely high level, but they will involve things such as offering a buyout at a fair price. And there are lots of people who can offer valuation services, checking the corporate documents so you have memorandums and articles and also a shareholders agreement if you were lucky enough to have agreed one at the outset and also just seeing if you can protect your position on the board of directors so just looking at do you have a representative director are they a friendly director and do you need to change them so those kind of things are you know, non-litigation options and then moving to the litigation options there are again this is a very high level but the kind of things that you might look at at the outset are things such as unfair prejudice 
this and what that means is where a shareholder looks at whether they have been unfairly prejudiced by the other party and in the BBI that's very wide so it also includes unfairly discriminatory and oppressive conduct as well. Right okay. Um, and derivative claims are another thing which you might look at and then there could be other claims possibly in there depending on on the evidence so you could have a breach of the fiduciary duties and there may well be fraud as well all depends on just taking a step back from those considerations typically are you seeing shareholders who simply just didn't get legal advice from the outset because i suspect the best advice would be jump in a time machine go back to when the company was set up and actually speak to some bbi corporate lawyers to make sure that the architecture of the company is set up that's certainly on the demand side is one of the challenges that we face absolutely and we do unfortunately we see lots of people who just didn't get that advice at the outset for all sorts of reasons it could be an experience they just trusted their partner so yeah we, we would definitely recommend that at the outset it's interesting the ebb and flow of of when people get their lawyers involved because after 2008 i certainly did a lot of forward facing advice whereby i was working with my corporate colleagues on trying to insulate documents to make sure that the shareholders position was as best protected as possible yeah. i think the key message here is not to cut corners even yeah. when you're you're sitting around the table and you're thinking of you know setting up a new business venture whatever it may be even if you're the, the best of friends and or family whatever it may be don't cut corners get the documentation in place and make sure all your ducks are lined up because you just don't know when you might need to point to it at a future date yeah i suppose it's just difficult when you're smoking cigars drinking rum and leafing through yacht monthly as to how successful your company is going to be but to actually yes actually exactly. stop, the, stop, the last stop. thing you, you want to do is then um, is start talking about a complicated documents but but yeah. equally um, do give some time to it i think it's the advice yeah exactly exactly and just as a complementary element of the options that you discussed francesca presumably injunctive relief is something that the bvi is not only only au fait with but is used regularly enough in these circumstances yeah absolutely and josh you were involved very recently in the case on that weren't you yes i was it was a specific case um about the bbi court's ability to grant freestanding injunctive relief in aid of foreign proceedings and i think the most interesting part of that case for me was you know obviously it's the highest appellate court for the bbi but that court drew on legislation from across the common law world so we saw judgments from jersey being used judgments from delaware being used so it's amazing despite being in the bvi you know all these different precedents authorities um, i think there was even books pulled in from different countries all looking at how the court grants a freestanding freezing injunction and whilst that particular case was considering whether the bvi courts could do that it has since been put on a statutory footing so if someone is looking to obtain an injunction over a bvi company there is a very tried and tested route by which to do that along with legal professionals and judges who are very familiar with a particular case law that arises from across the world we'll try not to uncork the black swan case otherwise we'll have to rename the podcast take four days but yeah, yeah it is fascinating how obviously the, the Privy council will look at a tapestry of case law to, to reach its decision and i suppose one of the challenges we have in london of course is that a lot of the work on the bv side that you guys do and certainly the Cayman work that I do it's very very familiar to onshore lawyers and it's almost deceptively and seductively familiar that you think well actually I, I understand you know I get these concepts but of course there are you know there are a number of fish hooks in there and, and that's where we like to think we can add some value and presumably that's the case with the unfair prejudice and derivative claims they would be readily recognized by by an English lawyer yeah absolutely they would be very familiar concepts, but BBI is actually a much wider statutory basis. There's much wider than um, than its English counterpart, so it includes um, unfairly discriminatory and oppressive conduct. And your your shopping list of things that you can ask the court to to grant is much longer as well and can include all sorts of things such as winding up and amending the um, M&As for example so really useful tool for us. Great well from my perspective that was a very good use of 10 minutes uh, taking a whistle stop tour through the practicalities of BBI shareholders remedies. I've learned a lot but I know very little so it doesn't take a lot to educate me so 
Thank you very much, Francesca. And thank you very much, Joshua. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure. Thank you.